Well, I wasn't going to make this video, but I think it might be necessary. Let's talk about these stupid elementals with Evoke in Modern. And they're only in Modern. Well, I guess they're in Legacy, but they're not as prevalent in Legacy, right? I made a tweet earlier today, or last night, whatever you want to call it, that said every Modern deck has four Fury <clears throat> and four Grief, four Solitude and four Fury, or four Subtlety, three Fury, and three Endurance. Basically every Modern deck except these fringe decks that take up maybe two to three percent of the metagame hammer amulet you know um the jund ragavan deck jund sagavan i guess they're calling it i don't know and so i just wanted to ban these idiots these stupid elemental idiots that warp the metagame around them so about a week ago there was an image posted on twitter that contained the results, not like like some of the results from the modern challenge on 11.3, the modern challenge on 11.4, the second modern challenge on 11.4, and the modern challenge on 11.5. On 11.3, 15 decks out of 32 were Rakdos based. Half the field. On the next day, 11 out of 32 were Rakdos based with Furies and Griefs. The next one was nine out of 32, 28% of the field. And the next one was 13 out of 32, back up to 41% of the field. Four different events, nearly everyone between 30 and 50% of the field were Fury and Grief decks. And this is not uncommon. <laughs> this is just how it is. And so I said this tweet, and then people were mostly receptive to it. They mostly agreed. But then some people say, hmm, Tron, Yawgmoth, Hammer, Amulet Titan, Thopter Sword, which I've seen maybe two copies of in the past three months, Merfolk, which I've seen, again, <laughs> like two copies in months. These decks exist and don't play the full suite of those cards. And sometimes none at all, or just in the sideboard. Sure, that's true. The problem isn't that Grief and Fury is bad, it's just that the metagame has coalesced around them. Yes. <laughs> what? I don't, like, I'm not sure, like, it, <clears throat> I don't actually understand what they're trying to say, I guess. That's, that's what's going on here. I don't actually understand the message that they're trying to communicate. Because then I said, I have literally no idea what this tweet is saying. Plenty of decks that take up, like, 2% of the metagame exist. No one is arguing that there aren't rogue decks. A and by all intents... <clears throat> Tron, Merfolk, Yawgmoth, Hammer. These are tier two decks. Grief and Fury decks are tier zero. No one's saying these other decks don't exist. They exist in like standard too. They exist in legacy. That What does that mean though? <laughs> They're not performing very well. Like, And so I say plenty of these decks that take up like 2% of the metagame exist. Yes, when the metagame warps around two to five cards... And I'm including all the other Evoke Elementals as well. <clears throat> and they're present in over 40% of the decks. That's unhealthy, man. I'm sorry. Like, that's just not healthy. And so someone else then says, condescendingly, love it. That's every format. Hello. Every control deck runs the same counters. Every aggro deck, the same combat tricks and every mid range deck, the same ramp spells and finishers. I would expect this take out of some random magic tuber and not a pro player, but pro in quotes to emphasize. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Emphasize their shittiness, I guess. Um, cause you can't really have an opinion on Twitter unless you scum it up, I think. Um, and make sure you make the other person feel like a moron. But the thing about this is, it's a terrible, terrible argument. Every control deck runs the same counters. Sure, a control deck is going to run Counterspell. Force of Will, one of the stronger counterspells. Days, Mana Leak, whatever's available. Whatever's available in your given format, that's what the control decks are usually going to use. The problem is that cards like Subtlety and Grief 
are not counter spells. They are not evergreen cards like Oblivion Ring, like Duress, like Thoughtseize, even the most egregious of this cycle of cards that we're talking about. Swords to Plowshares, Lightning Bolt, Force of Will, these evergreen spells that any deck is going to use if they have access to them. These are one for one reactive spells. And in the case of Force of Will, they're two for one. And we're talking about cards that are proactive threats that double as extremely efficient removal spells. Sure, man, every control deck is going to play a Swords to Plowshares. Solitude is a 3-2 flash creature with a Swords to Plowshares built in. Every deck is going to play Thoughtseize. Grief is a 3-3-3-2 three, 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 Thoughtseize with Menace. Every deck is going to play Lightning Bolt. Fury deals 4 damage, you can divide it however you choose, and it's got double strike. Like, these are not intelligent or reasonable comparisons. Every deck that runs Duress is not the same as running Grief. This is why they're not printed in Standard. <laughs> Because it's not the same. These are these are not these are oppressive cards rather than responsive uh, answers to things, right? Like uh, <laughs> every con- if you have a deck, a control deck in a format that plays like three duress in the sideboard, no one's gonna get upset about that because too many people are playing duress because it's not an oppressive card. <laughs> it's a one for one card that has a limitation on it. Grief is just a beating. Fury outclasses creature decks. When was the last time you saw like a Llanowar Elf, a Delighted Halfling, a Noble Hierarch, a ignoble Hierarch? When was the last time you really saw these creatures? Ragavan is like the only one toughness creature that you really see that frequently. That doesn't also, like, I guess because it provides value, right? You can also dash it in. So you can dash Ragavan in, get that point, get that card, get that treasure. Same thing with like Stoneforge Mystic. You're going to see that creature as well. But like you just don't see no value mana dorks in the format. Just doesn't exist. So I looked at some of the most commonly played cards in modern. The top creatures, number one is Fury at 45%. 45% of the decks in modern play Fury. That's half the decks. <laughs> And I'll keep going. Endurance is number five, which surprised me. I thought it'd be lower, but it's the most, it's one of the more versatile cards. <clears throat> graveyards are a strategy. Endurance gets rid of graveyards. It's a three fourth with flash and reach and it's for three mana. It's a great deal. It's a good, just a good creature. But I think endurance also targets a very specific thing. And I think it's less problematic. I think it's probably the least problematic. It makes graveyard strategies worse. But not more than, like, Leyline of the Void or Relic of Progenitus. Like, it's just a graveyard hater, basically. Other than that, it's just a fine creature. It's not ruining your... It doesn't prevent you from playing creatures. It doesn't prevent you from playing spells. It it doesn't have evasion. It doesn't deal a ton of damage. Like, it doesn't do these things really well. It's just a good... If I could think of one balanced card among the five, I think it's Endurance. Grief is number six. 26% of the, the, the decks. Subtlety, number nine. Solitude, number 10. All five of the Evoke Elementals are on this list. And to compare, I looked at Standard. The number one card played in Standard is Shieldred at 31%. The next highest card played in Standard, Lord Skidder Sewer King at 24%. And you know what? <clears throat> Maybe those numbers are slightly close, right? Think about this. Standard has 10 sets that are legal. 10. The amount of cards you have to pull from, significantly fewer. Modern, 85 friggin' sets are legal in modern. 85 sets. Out of 85 sets, let's say each set has 200 cards. That's not going to be accurate because that's just way too low. That's 17,000 cards in modern and only five creatures that aren't elementals are in the top 10. That's just, that's just ludicrous. That's just gratuitous. That's insane to me. So 
So I was just looking at, like, I'm looking at the deck lists on, on MTG Goldfish, right? <clears throat> Recent modern preliminary. Number one, Rakdos Scam. Number two, Hammer. Great. Number three, Crashing Footfalls. So this deck also has three Subtlety, three Fury, three Endurance, nine Elementals out of 75 cards. Next, fourth place, Rakdos. Fifth place, Living End. Sixth place, Beanstalk. 7th place Beanstalk. Both of those decks have 4 Solitude, 4 Fury in them each, not including if they have Endurance in the sideboard, which these do. Another 10 Elementals. 6 out of the, the, the top 7 decks, no, 5 out of the top 7 decks, have at least 8 to 10 Evoke Elementals in this one event that's just on the front page. The next deck's Racto Scam, Living End, Living End. Does Living End even have, like... Oh, actually, this Living End list has four grief, four fury in it. <laughs> so I actually was foolish to discount that. Let's check the first Living End deck as well. Yep, that has four fury, four subtlety in it. So I made a mistake. And four endurance in the sideboard. So that also has 12. Um, Hammer probably has four solitudes. Surprisingly, yep, they're in the sideboard. Every deck. So in this first event, this preliminary I just looked at, all seven decks have at least four up to 10. I don't know how much more problematic a card needs to be in a format for something to be done about them. You know, when <clears throat> I remember Eldrazi Winter because I played in that format and I did quite well with Eldrazi. You could acknowledge that the reason Thought Not Seer and Reality Smasher and Matter Reshaper and Eldrazi Mimic were a problem was because of Ayabugan making all of these creatures cheaper, reducing their cost. When has that caused problems? Made them too strong. So you got rid of the card that removed their cost. And then you just had to play them fairly. Five mana for a Reality Smasher, four mana for a Thought Not Seer. All of a sudden, they were not all over the place and you could barely find them now. While I wish we could do that with the Evoke Elementals and remove their Evoke costs because then they'd be just solid creatures. Like, Grief is literally just a Thought Knots here that you can cast for free and then reanimate it from the graveyard. It's similar to that. Except for the fact that even Thought Knots here <laughs> still gives your opponent a card when it leaves the battlefield. So, like, I, I don't know. Even Thought Knots here is a more balanced version of Grief. So, like, if you tried to... You can't, you can't evoke it either, I guess. So, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to make comparisons that people will understand because they clearly don't understand that grief is not duress or thought seize. Subtlety is not force of will or daze. Fury is not lightning bolt. These are not comparisons that are logical. These are not comparisons. These are not how metagames work. If an entire metagame is warping and coalescing around five different cards, and if you feel like you are at a disadvantage for not playing those cards... They are doing unhealthy things to the metagame. I, I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of all I all I really have to say. I just think that's some food for thought. I think people should really consider that. I don't know if anything's going to be done. I don't know when they're banning cards in modern. I think they just had a they had a ban announcement. Everyone laughed at it. There were countless memes where it said no changes <laughs> because people want changes. Um, I think it's not fun playing against the same griefs, the same furies, the same solitudes. I, I do think Rakdos scam is a big problem, but I think if you take that out, the next thing that's going to happen is Cascade Beanstalk decks that have four solitude for fury are still going to be problematic. And I think something still has to be done about you know, and then if you take out Solitude as well, you're like, okay, so we took out Fury, Grief, and Solitude. Then you leave Subtlety. Subtlety just gonna is just gonna dominate in the blue the blue black base control decks. I honestly feel like Endurance is the safest card to leave because it's literally mostly a sideboard card, and that's where I think these cards should shine in the sideboard. I think they should do more niche things than exile a card, a discard, make you discard a card, deal four damage, divide it any way you choose. Exile a creature and give them li like be swords to plowshares. You know, if you have a, a cycle of cards that's like uh, pyrokinesis, uh, thought sees, uh, swords to plowshares, and we'll say counter spell just because I, I, I can't think of a card off the top of my head that only counters planeswalkers or creatures. And then you have one more in the cycle that's like loaming shaman. <laughs> you know, it's like, well, 
that's not really the same, but it's still really good. It's still a great body. It's a great rate. It's versatile. Endurance is kind of like the standard of the five of them. Or it should be, right? That's what I mean. Endurance should be the standard for the five of them. Instead, the other four are just absolutely pushed in the wrong direction. And I would love to see what the top 10 most played cards in modern are if four of them left. I don't know if that's a good idea to ban all four and not just five. But, dude, like, something's got to be done. I think that's all I got. Hopefully... Hopefully you guys see where I'm coming from. Hopefully you guys agree. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.